Good morning to the saints of North Creek and the saints well beyond. Uh, this, this video today is going to be uh, from the uh, message that I preached on Sunday at North Creek United Methodist Church. The uh, video failed to record, so we don't have that recording. And I'm going to make kind of a uh, condensed version of uh, what we had. So at least I do have uh, on record what we did uh, cover. And then I'll have saved it. So if we want to use it for in different studies later on as part of the Ten Commandments series, uh, we'll be able to do that as well. And also for those people who um, do, when they miss church, like to go back and see what was going on each Sunday. Uh, before we begin, let us, let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds, that not only would we hear your word, but that we would be doers of your word. pray this in the name of our Lord Christ. Amen. Uh, where we are in that series is the, uh, the eighth commandment, thou shalt not steal. And it's, a, it's more of a complex issue than uh, is given off at first thought. Uh, it can be as simple as, hey, don't take my stuff. But then the question comes in, uh, who, who does the stuff, the things that we have, the things that we have acquired, who do they really belong to? And if we uh, manage to uh, keep those things and we become uh, hoarders of those things and we don't want to share those things, then it just perhaps we could be doing uh, breaking this commandment without even realizing that we're breaking this commandment, as well as having things taken from us and someone else breaking the commandment. Because the truth is, everything that we have belongs to God. Even we belong to God. God said that I have brought you out of the land of Egypt. I have delivered you. I have given you grace and I am your protector. You belong to me. I will care for you. And if we belong to God, all the thing of creation belongs to God. And that makes a big difference on how we look at this commandment. You know, as thou shalt not steal can be uh, simply as simple as someone just simply taking something that doesn't belong to them. I was uh, looking through a Reader's Digest and there was a story about this teacher uh, and um, um, a bunch of, I think there were fourth and fifth graders. But at any rate, she was walking around the classroom when they were working on their math uh, workbooks and uh, seeing how they were doing. She looked around, she saw this one little girl and she had this huge pencil, big round pencil. And on it, the Ten Commandments were written. And she looked down, she bent over really neatly and she said to the little girl, wow, I really like the, your pencil. And the little girl looked up and quite sincerely said, yeah, I really liked it too. That's why I took it from my brother. <laughs> well, there she was with the Ten Commandments written out. And what guess? She had broke the Eighth Commandment right then and there by stealing the pencil just because she liked it. And that happens sometimes, doesn't it? People take things just because they like it. Not necessarily because they can't do without it. Not necessarily like they couldn't make some other arrangement for it, but they just simply uh, take it because they want it. Well, that's one theft, and that's pretty easy to see, is it not? And we can understand uh, that very simply. That was wrong. But then there's so much more when theft takes place, isn't there? Uh, there's so much more than just taking of an item, for, a, uh, for example. Back... Many, many years ago, uh, when my wife Shirley was uh, either four or five years old, uh, she lived uh, in an apartment on Rhode Island Avenue in Washington, D.C. And one day she was out with her parents shopping or doing something. And when they returned home, they saw that the door was ajar. And even though it had a triple bolt on it, uh, someone had broken in. And the thing was, though, was they went around the apartment. There wasn't anything really missing. But then when Shirley went into her room, there sitting on her side table was a smashed piggy bank. Imagine that. Little four or five-year-old girl. Her little nickels, dimes, quarters, and pennies that had been 
cherished and pushed away for maybe buying something special in the future or something that was gone. Not only was the pick nickels, dimes, and pennies and quarters gone, but her favorite piggy bank was all smashed. And then she thought, oh my gosh, anybody could come in here because the doors were all locked and everything. And she said, and then she thought too, oh, is this people going to come back? Is it safe to be here? She felt vulnerable. She felt violated. All those things were going through this little kid's mind. So it wasn't just the theft of a thing. It was the theft of a thing that would affect someone for a very long time. In fact, perhaps a lifetime. And as we look at that, we think, well, why did those thieves come in? And why did they think that they had to have whatever was in that little piggy bag? They knew it couldn't have been a whole lot. And we don't know. We don't know the circumstance of the thieves. We just know that it had long-reaching consequences. But not only does it have long-reaching consequences, but we also have to think, well, if everything belongs to God, and someone um, asked me if they, uh, they are, or tells me they are in need, what do I do about that? Because if it really belongs to God, wouldn't I have to kind of think, well, what would God want me to do in this situation? Wouldn't that be true? It's kind of like the parable of the uh, two thieves. Um, a man came up and he was extremely hungry. And he had nowhere else to go, but he, he came upon this farmhouse. And he started to smell this baked bread. So he followed the smell of the baked bread, and he came around to the porch, and he came up on the porch, and he knocked on the door. Another man answered the door, and, and, and the man who was smelling the bread said to him, Sir, I am uh, famished. I am getting close to fainting. Could you spare some bread? And the man inside the house just simply said, you know what, if you weren't so lazy, you'd probably go out and you, you, would, you would earn some money and, and buy your own bread. He slammed the door on. Well, as the man who was hungry turned, he couldn't help but notice on the window, sitting there cooling, was this big loaf of homemade bread. So he grabbed that bread and he ran off the porch, down the street, into the woods. Now, I have to ask you, how many thieves were there actually in this particular situation? You can say one, and um, because the man clearly took the bread that didn't belong to him, but wait a minute, or did he take the bread that didn't belong to him? Isn't it true that that loaf of bread really belonged to God? Now, you can still say, well, he, he didn't have permission to take it. Well, there's a technicality going on here. What about the man in the house? Did he have one, two, five, ten, twenty loaves of bread? Did he have all the resources he needed to keep himself and his family well fed and taken care of? Because we don't know that. But we do know there was at least one loaf there. And couldn't he have not sliced off even one little portion and given to the man who was begging? You know, the scripture says, and I'll, I'll quote this here from uh, Matthew chapter, chapter 5. It says, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you in the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Because it all belongs to God. So when the person in the house denied the hungry person who would really deserve and, and should have a portion of that loaf of bread, he was actually stealing from the man who was begging. 
you know, I know that sounds like, oh, man, here's another bleeding heart going around, the poor people this, the poor people that. But you know what? One of the biggest complaints that God has ever had against the children of God, and that includes me and you and everybody else, you're not taking care of the widows. You're not taking care of the orphans. You're not taking care of the people who are hungry. You're not giving shelter to the people who need shelter. You're not doing any of those things. Don't store up for yourself a treasure that moth or rust can destroy or thieves can come in and take. Don't do that. Store up from yourself treasure that's in heaven. And that's what we need to think about. Our, is my action, uh, am, I, am I not acting enough? Is it that I've become a thief? And, and, and I don't mean that it's just necessarily financial, but someone who's in need of someone to care, need in someone to pray, need in someone to listen to them, need in someone uh, to help them in any whatever situation. Am I reaching out enough and taking care of others or am I becoming a thief? Am I violating this eighth commandment? I mean, need to think about that because it's more simple than a little kid stealing a pencil or a thief smashing a piggy bank. There's a whole lot more going on in that eighth commandment. And so I just pass it to you and let you think about it and let you pray about it. May the Lord add a blessing uh, to this session. Amen.